Oh ja, maar ik heb, ik heb voor de Nederlandse luisteraar nog wel alvast een hele vroege Sinterklaasrap. Eberhard van der Laan, bureaucraat met je zakenpak aan. Zit je lekker op het ploesje? Wij wensen jou een koude douche. Van jou de wet, van de straten het verzet. Eén belofte kan jij van op aan. Wij blijven in de weg staan. Oké, okay. okay, um, so uh, this will be a talk dealing with three ways to shape uh, your life and squatting and resistance and freedom. I warn you, uh, this uh, is a speech that uh, Fidel Castro would be uh, envious of in length. So uh, just uh, take a moment for it, sit down. It's a public street. Um, I'll continue in English. I am continuing in English because we're an international movement that thrives thanks to the influx of people from abroad. And because we don't go along with the xenophobic shit that has become so prevalent in the public debate. When uh, four houses uh, that were squatted at the Oosterparkstraat were evicted overnight in May 2008 and 46 people were arrested, they were of no less than 11 nationalities. Now the mainstream media spoke shame of it, but 11 nationalities on 46 arrests is not a problem, but something that we can be proud of. So, a history lesson. In uh, January 1996, uh, 1969, three rocks crashed through the window of the municipal rehousing agency, a housing broker's office and a building company. The rocks had a letter wrapped around them, and the letter read, These rocks are the founding stones of a monument, and the monument will be the end of your greatness. We are going to start building. Now, I think that's extremely funny, and besides, it speaks of a refreshing lack of realism that can bear forbidden fruits. I don't think I was hired here today for realism, so you're not going to get any of that, and neither for legal advice. Um, so this monument was erected and it has gone under different names such as the squat movement or the autonomous movement or the extreme left or just the movement until thus far it hasn't led to the end of the greatness of the owners or of the state but many of us gathered here today have lived out much and especially much of the best times of our lives within that monument and the end of this movement has been declared often since 1980 but resistance and creativity are not easily eradicated. In the media it has been said that with the current ban on squatting the phenomenon would end. Of course it's very funny that they seem to be in a bit of a problem right now uh, for, for, with this law, but they'll find a solution to that I guess. And the point then is to totally disregard their attempts any way we can. We did not start this because we got permission and we're not gonna stop if it is being revoked. And though we might indeed be in for some rough weather, this will not be the end of the story. The first squatters appeared about the same time as the first rich people started putting fences around the stuff they claimed to be their property. We predate the VVD and liberalism itself and we will outlive it and we will laugh when it goes down. Liberalism, a political creed named after freedom, today stands for higher punishment, surveillance cameras and a stale and dead so-called freedom that's mainly freedom of capital and for most people no more than a word. But words like freedom and equality need to be filled with meaning and infused with life to become real. I think there are generally three ways of giving meaning to freedom and equality which are exactly the same reasons as why squatting has survived so many attempts at declaring its end. Three ways of being politically and culturally autonomous, independent of state and market, and three ways of keeping the fire burning. Three ways to keep on moving. That's redistribution, resistance, and a culture of freedom and fun. Which brings us to the first point, redistribution. This has to do with the traditional political themes of wealth and housing and equality. The point is, in short, don't ask for higher payments, but occupy the companies. Re reclaim, redistribute, squat and steal. Not within the limits of legality, but within the limits of legitimacy. Woo! 
This is a sort of communism from below, a communism independent of and op in, often in opposition to the state. A well-known comrade from the east, or the east of Amsterdam that is, <laughs> once told me, for me the social struggle is about calories and square meters. And he has a point, because you cannot forget the material basis of your life and of a struggle. But, as the old slogan goes, punk is more than music, and likewise squatting is more than housing, and radical politics is more than redistribution. Which brings us to the second point. Resistance and autonomous political organization. Building anarchy, perhaps. Just as George Bush claimed the US to be the most peaceful nation in the world, likewise, many Dutch people imagine the Netherlands to be the peak of freedom. But the Netherlands is the champion of telephone taps and one of the leading countries in surveillance cameras. It punishes harder than the majority of, of European countries. It's the sixth largest weapon exporter in, uh, weapons exporter in the world. And it, and it has a far-right government ran by businessmen and bureaucrats. We lock up tens of thousands of animals, including monkeys, for all sorts of experiments, including which uh, experiments for nail polish and shampoo. Millions of pigs and one, almost 100 million chickens lead a tortured life before being eaten. And we make billions of dollars on exploiting poorer countries and complain about the little bit we give back. The homeless are fenced out of the public space everywhere where the terraces are bulging. Immigration is criminalized more and more each year we joyously travel all corners of the globe. So where is the freedom in that? Yeah, so where's the freedom in that? Refugees are being locked up by the thousands in totally inhumane circumstances in places like this. <laughs> this. And, uh, this. PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This kind of shit, and we don't need more of that, we need it, we don't need it. Um, so clearly a uh, total denial of everything human. Um, okay, uh, so refugees are being locked up in those circumstances. They are at this moment building a special mother and children's cells as we are, sp as we are speaking in Zestienhoven, Rotterdam. And most of the so-called left-wing or progressive parties have, have to say about this is that people should be locked up in better circumstances? What the fuck? Typically Dutch. Underneath the thin layer of tolerance there is nothing needed, there's nothing of the anger needed for a real change. Because god damn it, of course these people should not be locked up. Uh, to sum the second point up then, keep on standing in the way, keep on breaking and defending and organizing. And aim not for longer chains, but for a complete jailbreak, until the last cage is empty and the last prison torn down. Which brings us to the last point, the third one, a culture of freedom and fun. Of course, a million things in life are brilliant and interesting, without being revolutionary. So live your life to the fullest, it will only exp inspire your lust for freedom. And the most legitimate reasons for any rebellious deed or any sabotage is to lead the good life or enable others to do so. This is one of the things, one of the many things that the traditional state communists completely forgot, ending up just as horrible and bitter and grey as the system that they fought. But regression takes place in everyday life and it has to be fought there too. And the more we let a small group of people accumulate wealth by exploiting the others, the more we will be made into consumers of culture instead of the makers of it. And the more we force men and women into specified narrow roles, the more we will be made into dolls. Yeah. <laughs> but, the current, but the alternative currents are of all times. The cynics, cathars, diggers, levelers, particular pirate groups, slave uprisings, 
Iroquois League, Utopian Socialists, Anarchists and Feminists of various waves and ideas, Beatniks, New Diggers, Situationists, Anarcho-Punks. And don't think those hippies were all flower children either. The inheritance of these various groups is, uh, as, as it can be found in uh, squats, uh, for instance, is idealistic and colorful and cute, but also highly practical and insurgent and militant. It foams and bubbles and ferments, and I'll admit that it doesn't always live up to its ideals, but it usually stays anti-authoritarian, at least. It is fueled as much by a love for freedom as by the rage in the face of repression, exploitation and things, are bo and things that are boring. In the, in the com and it is the combination that makes it so dangerous and so charming. And it makes it so difficult to wipe out. So I'd say, with the help of Allah and enough revolutionary spirit, these right-wing times will spark not only resistance, but also new ways of living in self-made freedom, and the anti-squat law will remain the dead letter that it is, and we will feast on its grave. Thank you.